One thing people often puzzle about is how the tides are related to the position of the moon and how forecasters are able to accurately predict the highest tides known as spring tides and what causes these in particular to be higher than normal. Well, like many things relating to space, three key factors gravity, mass and distance. Now when you get two large objects in space orbiting relatively close to each other, they exert a significant gravitational force on each other. The larger the objects are in time of mass, and the closer they are, the greater the force that's exerted. As they orbit each other, the direction of the gravitational force pulling on each other also changes. Now in some moons, this change can result in dramatic flexing of the moon, creating a huge amount of internal heat resulting in volcanic activity to release that heat. Now on Earth, because a lot of the surface is actually covered with liquid, it moves far easier under gravity than solid rock. The movement of the water is far more noticeable than that of the rock. This means that large bodies of water, like the oceans, get pulled upwards towards the Moon as it orbits the Earth. Result, the highest water level, and so the highest part tide is when the moon is directly overhead or as near as it can be depending upon your latitude. Now this tapers off as the moon carries on round in place until it's at 90 degrees or at right angle to the location then you have a low tide. This carries on what might be viewed as the back of the earth and then the tide level rises again. Now this second high tide is rather curious since now the moon is on the opposite side of the Earth, and now you'd expect that the water be at its lowest level, since the gravitational effect from the Moon would be its weakest. As a result, there will be little force pulling the water upwards. This time, it's actually inertia we need to look at. When the Moon and the Earth are orbiting each other, they're basically falling towards each other, but missing each time due to the motions of each. The part of the Earth close to the Moon falls fastest only by a very tiny amount was pulled fastest, causing that tidal bulge. Now on the opposite side, due to weaker gravitational force, it's coming down slower. This inertia means that water is actually slower to move and actually bulges up slightly on that side of the Earth as well as on the other side. This means for every orbit of the Moon, we actually get two high tides and two low tides, and they're synchronised to the orbit of the Moon. Of course, Earth is gravitationally attracted to other items in our solar system. Anything from passing comets to other planets like Jupiter all have minor gravitational effects on the Earth. However, because the effects of gravity are related to mass and distance, a passing comet that could pass quite close lacks the mass to really alter our tides. And Jupiter, though it's fairly massive, is really too distant to have any observable change. There is, however, another object in our solar system that's closer than Jupiter and has a far larger mass, and so can, and actually does, alter our tides. This body, of course, is our Sun. Because the Sun is much further away than the Moon, the tidal effect is actually less than the Moon, but its huge mass means that the tidal effect is still significant. Now, when the Sun is actually lined up with Moon, either on either side of the Earth, or both on the same side, then you actually get a correspondingly higher tide. And this is what's known as the spring tides. That timing of the spring tide coincides with the storm it can be devastating for people alongside the coastline. However, if the Sun and the Moon are actually at right angles to the Earth, the Sun cancels out some of the Moon's tide and you can get a lower high tide than normal. That's what's known as a neap tide, where the difference between the high tide and the low tide is actually the smallest it can get. So that's a basic insight into how the movements of the sun and the moon affect our tides.